If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people, what unexplained event, encounter, or mystery from your personal life that still baffles you to this day. I remember a day at summer camp where we were on a portage trip through Crown Land in northern Canada, and it was a super windy day. We came to a section of the woods, and for some reason, the trees and foliage were completely still. For a few hundred feet, there was just silence, it was so weird. It was almost like an invisible wall was hit. What made it creepier was how I could see how white our guide was getting. It was very creepy. When I was a child, I was playing soccer with some friends from the neighborhood when one of us threw the ball onto a nearby roof. We went upstairs to retrieve it, and one of us found a creature. At first, we thought it was a bat since it was so similar. It was small, with wings and fur, but the strange thing is that it had a humanoid face. Similar to how imps are drawn in medieval books. The creature seemed to be injured or sick but was alive and was babbling and swearing in a strange voice. One of the bigger boys kicked him away into the brush, and that was it. I still remember the face and voice of that strange being. When I was in fifth grade, I went to science camp on a mountain in California. We had a night hike that was supposed to teach us about the different cells in our eyes, so we did it without any flashlights at all. Our eyes adjusted to just starlight, and it was actually pretty cool. Until the counselors made us walk a stretch of the path alone, one by one. We were 10, and at least some of us were still afraid of the dark. Me, so I was far too anxious to listen properly to the instructions. One counselor went ahead through the bushes and radioed for the other to start sending kids. My turn comes up, and I drag my feet down the path. Until I hit a fork. I vaguely remember the counselor saying something about it. Or was I remembering wrong? Which way was I supposed to go? Was it even a fork? or was I just not able to see properly in the dark? Mind you, this was a pitch black mountain in California with nothing around for miles other than the camp. I didn't want to get lost. I looked behind me, briefly considering going back the way I came to admit that I was a dumbass who didn't listen, but when I turned back to the fork, there was a man standing there. He was Asian, wearing wireframe glasses and a white t-shirt. It was barely 50 F on the mountain, I wasn't scared, I felt no malice from him. If anything, I was relieved to not be alone in the dark anymore. He gestured for me to go one way, so I did. I rejoined the rest of my class, and the counselor radioed to send the next kid. I didn't think anything of it for the rest of the trip. It took me until I was on the bus ride home, reflecting on the hike, to realize that I'd never seen him before. He wasn't one of the counselors leading the hike, he never came out with us, and he never emerged from the bushes after all the kids had done their solo walk. I have no idea who or what he was. I grew up in Texas, close to Louisiana. I was around 11 and playing on my grandmother's driveway with my little sister and cousin. A bird, or something of the sort, flew over the driveway, which was wide enough for two vehicles, and its shadow covered the entire width of the driveway plus several feet on each side. My grandmother began screaming at me to grab the babies. She and I each grabbed a child and ran inside. She was pale and trembling, and I asked her what it was. She said she didn't know and had never seen anything that size. My grandmother is very rational and non-dramatic. To this day, I'm not sure what flew over her driveway. I think about it once a month. This happened to me and a friend when we were 16. There's a patch of ancient woodland near her childhood home. Ancient woodland in the UK means remnants of the forest that used to cover most of the country before humans got involved, she went there nearly every day to climb trees and read. We went out there on a full moon at midsummer, just chatting and joshing around like you do. Anyway, something starts making noise in the undergrowth. Slow, deliberate noise. Too big for a house cat or even a badger or a dog. We freak out and head back. We followed the exact same path back, we weren't even that far into the woods. We limbed over the stile and found ourselves in a village two miles away. We ended up running through the twilight murk, crossing farmers' fields with signs saying trespassers will be shot. Whatever was following us kept pace the whole way, until we broke the hedge line and made it onto the roads. I still have no idea what was going on there. It was so surreal afterwards. The only way I can ever conceptualize it is that something in those woods was ducking with us. When I was 10, my mom moved away to do a course, and I went to live with my dad for a year. At the time, I was really into card captors, a cartoon manga series thing, and I had a set of the card things from it. Before she left, I made her pick a random one to keep and take with her, and the one she picked was the fire card. A few months after she moved, there was a huge fire in her flat, and absolutely everything was destroyed. They went back to see if there was anything that could be saved, and the card I gave her was lying face down in the middle of the floor, 
completely untouched. I don't think she has it anymore, but she kept it long enough to show me. It was a tiny bit charred at the edges, but otherwise completely intact. It still freaks me out a lot. I remember having a nightmare once, where I woke up and got out of bed afterwards. I had a loft bed, so getting out of bed involved jumping down or using a ladder. I was fully awake at this point, eyes open, hearing things, fully conscious. I heard voices downstairs, it sounded like we had some company over. Familiar voices, they were family friends who visited often. I jumped down so I could see who it was. As I began to walk out of my room, something grabbed me from behind and dragged me into the closet. I couldn't scream and couldn't struggle. I just got dragged straight backwards. As soon as I got to the closet, I woke up, I said that, but I don't remember anything changing. My eyes didn't open, and I didn't sit up, nothing like any other dream or nightmare I would wake up from. I just woke up sitting in front of my closet. There were no voices from outside at all. I have no idea what happened. If it was a dream or nightmare, it was the most vivid and realistic dream or nightmare I've ever had. I've never had a nightmare within a nightmare before that, and it never happened again. I had a strange experience when I was in fourth grade that I have never been able to explain. I was lying awake in my bed when I looked out my window, and this blue light shone through. I instantly woke up at 630 AM I thought I just had a strange dream, so I played it off and got ready for school. When I turned the light on, I noticed I had weird scratches on my arm. I just assumed I scratched myself in my sleep. When I got on the school bus that morning, my friend Jordan started telling me this story about him seeing a blue light and then instantly waking up hours later with scratches on his arm. I looked at his arms, we had the same scratches in the same places. I have never been able to explain what happened that day. Any suggestions? This happened years ago, I was maybe 11 to 13. I remember waking in the middle of the night and glancing over at my window because an unusually bright white light was shining on it. I had my blinds down so I could not see out, but I could see that the light was moving back and forth, as if it were a spotlight fixated on scanning my bedroom. My first thought was that it was my neighbor's motion sensor light, but my room is on the second story, and their light also does not move in any way. Additionally, there are no trees between my window and their light to give it the appearance of moving. At this point, I was startled and, as kids do, was getting ready to book it out of my room to run down the hall to my parents' room. As I sat up in bed, my eyes were still fixated on the light scanning my window. It suddenly stopped moving as if it knew I was there, and it was pointedly focused on me sitting up in bed. It was so bright, I recall seeing my shadow start against my wall as I threw the blankets off me and ran to my mother. I woke her up in a panic, spewing stuff about aliens, and I ended up staying in her bed that night. She told my father in the morning, who ridiculed me. Both brushed me off, but I was scared shless to sleep in my room for nights. I never figured out an explanation for this. I doubt my parents remember, but this experience has stuck with me since, and my bed is now situated underneath that window. Nothing else similar has happened, but I have always wondered what that light was that I saw that night. I wish I had an explanation for this, because it feels insane, but I have no reason to lie about it, because if anything, saying it happened looks crazier. I was at a sleepover in middle school, playing light as a feather and stiff as a board. For anyone unfamiliar, it's a silly, scary slumber party game, like a Ujia board, where you try to do some seance-esque nonsense, get together, put your hands under someone lying on the floor, close your eyes, chant light as a feather, stiff as a board repeatedly, and try to get them to levitate. Dumb right? A group of about eight girls and I had been playing to no real avail, obviously, but when it was one girl's turn, Ali Wit Alex, if you're out there, back me up, we did the chant, zoned in, and, before long, had this girl over our heads on, I shit you not, just the tips of our fingers. Her fully horizontal body was resting above eye level on two fingers on each hand, taking barely any effort or weight. And not only could I see that everyone else was only using two or three fingertips max, if not holding her over their head, but I was easily both the tallest and strongest person there, no one could have been lifting her alone under the circumstances. Once she got to a certain height, someone got freaked out, screamed, and her total weight fell on us, we had to stick our arms out and catch her, where she'd been at the same level effortlessly just a few seconds earlier. While I don't have a single scientific explanation, we did live in the woods in rural-slash-old-timey New England, in an area where there were certainly colonial-era battles, issues with settlers, indigenous burial grounds, etc., and, needless to say, we didn't duck with incantations much after that. I was playing hide and seek at my family cabin outside when I was like eight. I was the youngest of the cousins, and I was always left behind. 
I decided I was going to cheat and peek through my eyes when I was counting. I saw what I thought was one of my cousins, we were all wearing the same family reunion shirt, take off towards the lake, so when time was up, I followed. Sure enough, I could see my cousin standing behind our boathouse. I snuck up behind her and yelled gotcha. When she turned around, it was me. But it wasn't me, it was like seeing the version of yourself on the front camera or something. Mirrored. I screamed and fell over, and I actually ended up cutting my hand pretty badly on some of the sharp rocks that peppered our yard, trying to scramble away. Then my cousin, it was actually my cousin, back to her normal self, ran to get help. I ended up getting everyone in trouble for playing by the water, and when I told my mom what happened, she thought I was sleep deprived and made me sleep in their room the rest of the trip. I kind of brushed it off, but as an adult now, I still remember it so vividly. It almost makes me feel sick just to think about. I consider myself a rational person. Of course, most people would believe that about themselves, however objective they try to be. This is something that happened to me and a friend around 18 years ago. I was hanging out with him and his cousin in his new house. This was a somewhat busy area near a major commercial center. At around 9 PM, we decided to take a walk to a convenience store for food. His cousin decided to stay at the house. It took us 30 minutes to get to the store. There was a fair amount of vehicular and pedestrian traffic. On the way back, we both started getting this really weird feeling. It's hard to describe now, but both of our experiences matched up when discussing it later on. It felt like the air was much lighter. Thinner. The street seemed odd somehow. Out of place. All of a sudden, there were no cars or people around. Everything went dead silent. This continued for a few minutes, and we both started walking faster. What freaks me out to this day, and what I could never explain, is this, both of our watches stopped working. My digital and his analog his watch stopped at 9.41 PM he was later able to get it fixed, mine was dead for good. When we got back to the house, it was minutes to 11, and his cousin was freaking out. We were gone for an hour longer than we were meant to. There was no way we could have taken that long to get back. If anything, we walked faster than we did to get to the store. We moved into our home in December 2020. It was built in 2013, so it's really not that old. We found out down the road that there actually used to be two properties where our home is, and that they were both owned by an older man. He lived in one home, and his son lived in the other. Apparently the son's home was the town drug home, and after the police finally raided the house, the old man sold the properties to a local builder, who demolished them and constructed four homes. I have no idea what went on in these homes other than, presumably, hard drugs. We moved in, and everything is great. The family is happy. I start to see what I think are shadows or silhouettes. It doesn't really bother me that much. Fast forward a few months, and we have a couple over for dinner. In the middle of dinner, the wife looks into our kitchen door from our back patio and gasps. She said she saw a shadowy man standing in the doorway. We kind of laugh it off, and I explain that I thought I had seen something similar. Fast forward to 2023, and there has really been no activity since initially moving in. Our one-year-old has been very attached to my wife and sleeping on our bed, so I default to the couch a lot. I wake up one night to what I think is a dark silhouette standing maybe 8 to 10 feet from the couch. I'm pretty sure I screamed pretty loud, lol, because my wife was teasing me about hearing me scream in the middle of the night. Fast forward a month later to last week, 7 slash 7 ish, and I wake up to both downstairs TVs turned on. Turn them both off and go back to bed. A few nights later, I wake up in the middle of the night to what sounds like a hand slapping our blinds. Not too hard but definitely harder than what a gust of wind or breeze is capable of doing. I'm not sure what feedback I'm looking for, but I just thought I'd share. It was about three summers ago that I was visiting my dad. My brother calls to say he is on his way to visit. I stay at the house while my dad is running to do. My dad lives in the country, which is peaceful and quiet. So I'm by myself, right in the next room, doing dishes. You can see the porch or deck from the kitchen as I have the front door open waiting for my brother to arrive and my dad to get back home. I hear my dad's truck pull into the driveway, and then my brother's car right behind him. I hear them get out of the vehicles and talk to each other. I hear my dad walking up the ramp and my brother on the stairs talking to each other. I run out to the porch to greet them, and there is nothing, no one there, no vehicles in the driveway, nothing. At this point, I'm really confused, but I shake my head and blow it off. My brother shows up an hour later, stays a bit, then leaves. Then my dad arrives home soon after. I told my dad about the experience I had when he arrived home. He said, oh yeah, that's the mimic, like it was normal. 
he said it likes to copy him. He told me the reason my son moved out was because he was terrified of it. So I call my son and ask if he has had experiences with my dad. He confirmed my dad's story. Also, many years ago, my dad had a neighbor who lived in the vacant house next door. She was a very mean lady, she also hung herself from the ceiling fan. She was found weeks later. The neighboring vacant house down the road also has a story. The two sons that lived there with their family, when they grew up, held the parents hostage and tortured and killed them over a month's time before anyone found them. They were very mean boys as kids, too. I'm wondering if maybe the land is cursed on that road. Looking into old newspapers, I find there have been numerous incidents on this road, ranging from car accidents to murders. A few weeks ago, my girlfriend and I were driving back late at night from the carnival. The particular road we took was empty, as it usually is in that part of the country. There were no lights at the side of the road, and it was foggy. While we were driving, a sudden single light popped up behind the car, maybe about a kilometer away. Moving closer at a very fast pace. I said to my girlfriend, hmm, that motorcyclist is very brave, he is moving fast. She looks around, and she says, yeah, he is. At about 500 meters, or maybe closer, he suddenly steers off to the right. Which was odd because there was no exit, just a straight road with forest and a ditch on both sides. Thinking he had an accident, we stopped and drove to where the light disappeared. The grass seemed as if someone actually did go through there, but no one was to be found. Being in an abandoned part of the country, we didn't feel like we should be going into the forest because we could seriously get lost in the dark. And besides, if someone did have an accident, they'd probably be in the ditch or the grass behind the ditch. We just shrugged it off and went on our way. Not even a minute later, the light appeared again, this time entering from the left and moving even faster. When the light was very close, I couldn't see it in my mirror anymore, like it should be at a dead angle. I looked to my left, where it should have been, nothing. My girlfriend was seriously freaking out and said not to stop, no matter what. We didn't encounter any more strange lights that day. I grew up on a dirt road in a small town in a beautiful house. My parents were divorced, and my mom was always at work, so I spent most of my time either at school or alone. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I would wake up to the sound of chains rattling, I know, right? And I would go downstairs to investigate. The inside of my house was like a circle, with a spiral staircase going up the middle, so every room on the ground floor had two large walkways, and the sound would always be coming from the kitchen. I'd realize the sound was the overhead fan, or rather the pull chains that make it function, were getting batted around like a cat was playing with them. I flipped a light switch, and the chain dropped straight almost immediately as the kitchen lights turned on. Nobody believed me until my brother and I heard footsteps above our heads when we were in the basement, which prompted us to search the house for intruders on more than one occasion. It also just felt like you were constantly being watched in that house. My brother and I slept in the living room several times because of this. I'm not sure what to call it, those were the only things that really happened. June 2015. I can't remember the exact date, but it still freaks me out to this day. I live in a fairly large town in Hampshire, England. There is a disused railway next to where I live, it's hard to describe, but I live just off the road in a car park surrounded by houses on two sides. Next to this disused railway is a working man's club, think British pub but with a membership. Me and my family were there, watching a Beatles tribute act. Anyways, the night finished, and we started to walk home, aka, the less than two minute walk home. As we got outside the railway station, I noticed a man running in the middle of the road. He wasn't running very fast, but he was panting and looked like he was trying to get away from something. I thought maybe he was drunk, which could be the case. Then, as he was about 500 yards away from us in front, a silent shadow passed us, like a black patch on the ground that was following him, in the exact spot he had run. We all witnessed it, but only me and my auntie remember the shadow on the ground. It couldn't have been any trees, as the shadow carried on for way too long to be a single tree. I still don't know what this could have been. This happened about a year ago. One Sunday morning, I was about to leave my house to run some errands. But when I went to grab my wallet, it was gone. I always put my wallet next to my bedside, but okay. I looked through my laundry. Nothing. My car, nothing. My wife and I spent hours looking all over my house. Nothing. I drove to three different places I visited the day before, nothing. After wasting a gorgeous Sunday looking for my wallet, I finally gave up. I cancelled my credit cards. There was no cash in it. Life moved on. I got a new wallet. Got new cards. Fast forward six months later. I was getting ready to do a remodeling project at the house. I went to my closet, 
which contained a plastic tote with old clothes in it to wear for stuff like that. I grabbed a pair of pants buried near the bottom, unfolded them, and out of nowhere, my lost wallet went flying across my bedroom, presumably from the pocket. I haven't worn these pants in over a year. I sat there looking at it, shocked. WTF? A few weeks later, I was telling my father the story. He thinks someone or something prevented me from going out to run errands that day. I felt a shiver up my spine when he said that. Nothing like that has ever happened to me before or since. About four months ago, while at a yard sale, I inquired about a really beautiful solid wood vintage mirror. The lady said she didn't care for the mirror and insisted that I keep it as long as I bought another thing, so I brought it home. The first place I brought it was the kitchen to wash it, and right away the lights flickered, but besides that, that night was uneventful, my cats even seemed to enjoy playing behind the mirror. But the following week, spooky stuff ensued. I would see shadows in the mirror, and it got to the point where I took it out of the bathroom and instead placed it in the hallway. My dad also began telling me that he'd see things in it, and I resorted to covering it with a cloth. The cloth would always fall off by morning and sometimes end up in places far away from the hallway, i.e., the living room or even my dad's bedroom. The mirror has been living in the hallway closet, but things continue to happen, like shadowy figures both me and my dad saw and cabinet doors being left open on nights when I'm alone, cats can't get up to the cabinet doors. The scariest thing to happen thus far was a week ago when I was in my kitchen and heard someone knocking on the window right behind me, I live on the third floor, and the only window with balcony access is the living room. I've also been having horrible nightmares, most of which feature the mirror. Has anyone else experienced something similar with mirrors? I sleep in the basement of a one-story house out in the country. We never saw or heard anything unexplainable until, out of nowhere, weird noises could be heard outside our house. About three years ago, the first noises were heard by both me and my mom. We had let the dog out around 12 at night, and were letting him back in and talking when we heard a sound that no animal could make. It sounded like a large cat that had its throat slit, it was like a gargling meow. We both immediately stopped talking and looked outside to see if there was anything just outside because that's where it sounded like it was coming from, just beyond where our house's lights could reach, but we saw nothing. It was like something just letting you know it's there, then not doing anything or making another sound. The next incident happened a couple months later, when I was sleeping outside my room since I didn't have a bed at the time and the futon couldn't fit through my doorway. It was late at night. I was watching TV, and I heard what sounded like someone moving stuff around just outside my laundry room. The layout of my basement is pretty open, so from where I was lying, I could see almost everything in the basement except the laundry room and another open area at the bottom of the stairs. I thought someone might have come down to get something from the fridge or freezer, so I just went back to watching TV. A couple seconds later, I heard someone walking around barefoot, and since the floor is concrete, you can hear it pretty clearly, so I sat up and thought someone was going to turn the corner, but then the walking turned into a full sprint, and that's when it happened. I watched as the footsteps ran past in front of me, but nobody was there. They disappeared into our unfinished bathroom and stopped instantly, and when I say instantly, I mean no slowdown in the footsteps, just an abrupt stop. My dog used to sleep in that bathroom, but after that, he wouldn't even come downstairs. After that, I had my first and last sleep paralysis episode where I heard the same footsteps before a pitch black person on all fours crawled at me and got right in my face before disappearing under the futon. The final incident happened probably three or four months later, when I was finally back in my room. I was lying in bed when I heard those footsteps again, but it sounded like they were running around aimlessly. After a good minute of this, they stopped in front of my door, and it went quiet, but only for a few seconds before my doorknob began to jiggle back and forth. I've never had that sense of dread in my life, and I've never been so scared. I ran to my door, grabbed the knob, and sat with my back up against the door and my feet pushing against the wall opposite. I even looked under the door, and there was nothing there. I probably sat there for 30 minutes before I got the courage to move, and throughout those 30 minutes, I kept looking under the door. I slept with a steel bar that night. Since that night, nothing major has happened, but sometimes when I come back into my room and close the door, I'll turn around and my door will be open again. I have very vivid memories of my childhood. They have never been incorrect when I check my experiences with parents, older relatives, etc. I limit who I tell the following story to too, simply because most people think I'm crazy and just dismiss it, but I need to know if anyone else has experienced something similar. I will believe that the following happened the day I die, I cannot think of any possible thing that would sway me from believing in it. I was 6 years old, and I was in Scotland. I remember exactly what I was wearing that day, a jean skirt, pink tights, a long sleeve pink shirt, 
and a tiara that I had insisted on wearing. My uncle had just taken me fly fishing, where I very proudly caught a rainbow trout and then released it. My family decided that we should go on a hike through the woods, so we all set off. We were familiar with the woods and trails, and my parents walked ahead of my friend and me, knowing that we were safe and would be able to catch up quickly after we stopped to look at things. My friend walked ahead of me, and I turned to look at a tree next to me. Sitting on a branch was a fairy. Her figure was slim and almost translucent. A whitish glow seemed to be contained inside of her, not radiating from the center but equally spreading throughout, so she appeared more white. Her wings were shaped like butterfly wings, with those rounded points at the top and bottom. It's hard to describe, but the way that her body moved and her coloring reminded me of the way that plastic shopping bags move when they are in the water, if that makes any sense. She seemed to just be floating or sitting on this branch and looking at me. I remember just looking at her and feeling very calm. I did not attempt to touch her or reach out, I felt no need to do so. It was a surreal moment looking back, but when I lived it, it felt almost normal in a way. My friend called me, I looked up, and when I looked back, she was gone. I didn't tell him or my parents. After this happened, I became a bit obsessed with fairies and often made them houses in my yard and in the woods. Sometimes I still do. Around age 8, I woke up in the middle of the night, and there was a woman crouched down on the opposite side of my room, facing away from me. My parents always left my door cracked open and the hallway light on so I could see her clearly. At first, I thought she was my mom, and I almost asked her what she was doing, but when she turned around, I realized she was not my mother. She had very, very short blonde hair and big blue eyes, and she was wearing a light pink sweat suit and white tennis shoes. We lived in a secluded area by a forest and down a dirt road with only a few neighbors. We knew all of our neighbors, and she was not one of them. My parents always, always locked the doors and checked the window locks before they went to bed, and we had a dog that would have whined if a stranger came in, so I don't know how this woman got in our house. She was there for a long time, and I know I was awake because the entire time my heart felt like it was beating out of my chest, and I've still never been so afraid in my life, some 30 years later. I was too afraid to call for my parents, whose bedroom was just on the other side of the wall, because I thought she would hurt them. I didn't sleep properly for years because the experience had terrified me that much. To this day, I know in my heart that she was a real person, but I don't understand what she was doing there or how she got in. She was just taking her time and looking at all the random junk on my bedroom floor, toys and Easter baskets that we had left lying about, nothing interesting to a normal adult, and she was getting real close and checking on me and my sister, in the bunk bed above, to see if we were asleep. I pretended to be asleep. Was this a crazy woman who just stumbled into our house? Eventually she left the room, and I fell back asleep and didn't wake up until about 5 a.m. when my father got up for work. All these years later, I wonder how she got in without being heard and what she was doing. Why would you wear a pink sweat suit and white shoes to break into someone's house? I just can't figure it out. When I told my parents the next morning, I think they were horrified, but they told me that I must have been dreaming. Years later, they confessed that the whole thing majorly creeped them out, and the fact that I couldn't sleep for years made them extra suspicious that it wasn't a dream. I would wake up every night at like 3 a.m. and ask to sleep on the floor next to their bed for like two years, and I just lay there listening to every creak the house made for what seemed like an hour every night. I lived in a house where unexplainable things occurred. It was a double, and I rented the bottom, and my sister and my newborn nephew lived in the unit on top. Crazy and unexplained things just kept happening. For example, one time I was knocking on my sister's door and no one would answer. The door was locked, and I figured she was in the back bedroom and couldn't hear me. So I knocked louder, and finally I could hear someone walking down the stairs to unlock the door to let me in. Only when I open the door is anyone there. I go upstairs and find my sister and nephew asleep. When I wake up, my sister has no clue what I am talking about and no clue who let me in, but she tells me that somehow her son keeps getting out of his very large crib without a scratch on him or even a bump or a sound. It was completely impossible for a newborn to get out of this crib, but it happened again when I was babysitting. It's still scaring me to think about because it was impossible to escape the crib, and if he somehow could climb out, he would be hurt badly. I went to check on him, he was sitting on the floor completely fine, just chilling like he wasn't alone. Stuff like this kept happening, and then one day someone shows up while we are standing on the porch, and they tell us their name and ask if their W2S had been sent there. Apparently, they were the previous tenants. We did find the mail he was looking for, proving he was who he said he was. He refused to step on property and told us we needed to be out of that house as soon as possible. He told us his mom lost her mind from living in that house and will never be the same. After everything we had experienced, how could we not believe him? 
we were on a month-to-month lease, and after that, we got out as soon as possible. I am a rational, logical person, and I just have never been able to explain to myself what was going on there. I grew up in an extremely active haunted house in Texas. My parents still live there. Lots of really weird, unexplainable things happen there, but this one thing scared me the most. One day, when I was 18, I was getting prepared for my first job interview at Walmart. This happened the day before the interview, but I was still picking my clothes out and whatnot. I ended up waking up at around 6 a.m. that day. I did my usual shower, ate, and got dressed. Nothing out of the ordinary. That is, until I looked into my big unicorn mirror. Let me describe this mirror. It is pretty big, with snow white vines around the edges and a medium sized unicorn off to the side, the same color as the vines. My mom had had that mirror since she was little and eventually gave it to me. Anyway, I looked into the mirror after getting dressed, and I saw this faint demon face. Basically, a semi flesh skeleton head with pieces of flesh hanging off and deep red eyes. I freaked out and screamed, of course. I run around turning all the lights in the house on, and I'm repeatedly saying, go away. Nine times out of ten that worked. I grab a Bible for protection because, obviously, this thing is not good. As I sit down on my bed and look up, I freaking see this skeleton, Satan, or demon thing leaning around my door. I still vividly remember seeing its decaying hand reach around my door frame. And off I go, screaming again, which wakes up everyone in the house. I told my mom and grandma about it. They gave me a few crosses and told me to keep the Bible open at all times. I didn't sleep with the lights off for at least a week after that, and I shook all day long after seeing the decaying flesh monster with red eyes. I had never seen a demon before until then, but I will never forget the feeling of utter terror it gave me. Yes, I had tried to get rid of that freaking mirror way before I ever saw the face in it because I swear that thing is like an invitation for ghosts or some shit. If I took it down from its spot on the wall, I would usually have things get tossed off the walls, my stuff would magically break. Needless to say, I left it on the wall. My mom won't even take it down because it pisses off something in that house. So when I was about 7 or 8, my brother and I shared a room and slept in bunk beds. One evening I had a bedtime of 8.30ish, so I was in my room with the lights off and a little reading light on because I was doing school reading before bed. I know for a fact that my parents and brother were in the front of the house watching TV, and I was alone in the back where the room was. I was starting to read when I heard what sounded like a scratch at my door, faint but still enough to make me curious. So I sat really still and listened. Again, a faint scratch, but a little harder this time. So I call out John? Dad? Mom? No answer. Then, a few minutes later, I heard it again, but this time it was absolutely my door and someone's nail. It sent chills down my spine. As I sat frozen in my bed, the scratching began to go from slowly drawn out, like 3 or 4 seconds long, and sounded like it was going from top to bottom of the doorway. If you could imagine the standard door with 4 indents for design, someone would just scratch from the top of the top row to the door handle level. It started out every 5 seconds for a few seconds. Then stop. A few seconds later, it started. Then, when I fearfully called out if it was my parents or brother ducking with me, I got no answer. But the freakish part was right, as I did that, the scratching immediately got quicker. Louder and aggressive, so loud that I don't understand how my family didn't hear it happening. Still, it continued until it suddenly stopped, and then I heard the door handle start to rattle, then turn slowly. Now this part is important. I was laying under the reading light when everything popped off, but when the door handle moved and I got scared SHT less, I dove to the side of the bed where my pillows were and covered myself. I remember not hearing much but faintly hearing movement in the room. Suddenly something or someone pulled the covers where my feet were up so as to reveal my face hiding where I would have been reading, but it was just my feet, so I screamed bloody murder for my parents, and like 15 seconds later they got in there and reassured me that no one was there but us. The weird thing is that they just think I was asleep. They tell me that my brother was in the room with them the whole time, they were watching a movie. They had it kind of loud, so they wouldn't have heard scratching or, apparently, me yelling for them. I slept in my mom's room for a week, I think. They tried every night to convince me it was a bad dream, but I know I was awake, I know I heard the scratches, I know I saw the door move, someone ripped the blanket, and their hand hit my foot when they did it. I don't talk about it with family anymore because they just brush it off, but of all the paranormal or creepy things I have experienced, this is the only one I can't logically explain at all. When I was a kid, I was convinced I saw an alien spying on me. It was when I was maybe seven-ish. I was laying in bed awake when I looked over and saw this weird, 
hairy creature hunched over and staring into my room through the crack in my door. It was built mostly like a man, two arms, two legs, one head, etc., but completely covered in long brown fur and had glowing yellow eyes. Think Chewbacca, except his face is completely covered by hair, so the only features you can make out are the glowing eyes. It was just crouched there looking at me until I hid under my blanket for a while, then was gone when I worked up the courage to look again. I didn't know what it was, and even at that age, I had decided the next morning that I was just dreaming or something, even though it didn't feel like a dream at all. But within a few days, I checked out a book about supposedly true alien encounters from the school library, not because of what I saw, which I didn't even think of as an alien, I just liked alien stories, and nearly flipped my lid when I got to a story about someone having an encounter with aliens that looked exactly like the thing I had seen. To this day, as an adult, I wonder about it. It's easy to brush it off as being a result of an overactive imagination, and 95% of the time, that's what I think of it as. But there's still that 5% that's weirded out by finding this other story that describes exactly what I saw. So I essentially grew up in the woods. I live in the middle of nowhere, and I spent more time in the forest than I did out of it. My whole family would go to my grandparents every weekend, and they had a huge property mostly made up of a forest that me and my cousins played in all the time. We all knew the woods pretty well, and from a fairly early age, we'd all be allowed to explore by ourselves as the likelihood of getting lost was slim to none, especially if we stayed on the trail. Within these woods was a cabin that my family had built together, and it was common for us to all go there to hang out. It wasn't super deep in the woods, and the way there was almost a straight shot, aside from one turn near the entrance of the forest behind my grandparents' house, where you had to cross a bridge to get over a deep ravine, and then turn left. After that first left turn, you walk straight on the trail, and you end up at the cabin. It was a walk that I must have made at least a million times before I turned 10. It was decently common for there to be one group of people at the cabin and another group back at the house, and one day when I was about 10-ish, exactly this happened. I was with the group at the cabin and decided I wanted to head back to the house, so I started on the walk. I remind you that it was almost impossible to get lost on this walk, but when I got to where I should have turned the corner and seen the bridge in the back of the house, I only saw the bridge. Past the bridge were just more woods. I was extremely confused and honestly pretty scared, because no matter how much I tried to tell myself, I must have taken a wrong turn that just didn't make sense. There were no other bridges in my grandparents' woods, and there's no way I could have accidentally crossed into a neighbor's property in that short of a walk. Even if I had somehow taken a wrong turn on a walk where I stayed on a straight trail and somehow didn't notice, I knew these woods very well, and everything around and behind me suggested that across that bridge should have been my grandparents' house. But somehow, it wasn't there. I was not crossing that bridge. Absolutely not. I turned around and walked back to the cabin, and again, I'm almost certain I couldn't have taken a wrong turn because the walk back to the cabin was identical to the walk from my grandparents' house to the cabin. When I got to the cabin, no one believed me when I recounted what happened. They assured me I just got lost somehow, and in fact, my mom was mad that I didn't tell anyone I was leaving and then was careless enough to get lost. When I brought up the fact that that was impossible because I saw the bridge and there's no other bridge in the woods, they said I was lying to get out of trouble. This is only one of many weird stories I have that took place in these woods, and it's one of the ones I don't bring up with family anymore as they still believe I was lying, or they don't even remember it, so they dismiss it as a dream. I know it wasn't a dream. I still can't explain what it was, though. When I was about 8 or 9, we had a small kiddie pool in our yard, and we also had a big turtle sandbox that came with a lid that looked like a shell. They were directly next to each other. My cousin was babysitting my two brothers and me one day while my parents were out shopping somewhere. While my cousin was inside dealing with my brothers, who are younger than I am, I decided I would hide in the kiddie pool, and when she came out looking for me, I was going to pop out and scare her. I took the turtle shell lid and placed it over myself in the pool, which had maybe one and a half feet. I laid on my side so that she definitely wouldn't see me. I sat in there for about 15 seconds before I figured out that the lid had created a suction to the bottom of the pool and I was stuck laying on my side underneath it. I struggled to get out, but I couldn't get enough push to get one of the sides up. I then saw a hand, I don't remember any features on it. Put its fingers underneath the edge and pulled the lid of the sandbox off and out of the pool. I got out, gasping for air, and looked around, but I was alone, my cousin and brothers were still inside the house. I told my mom about it later that night, and she said it was my guardian angel and that it wasn't the first time it had saved me. Many years ago, I was hiking with my family. The place we were at had two trails that were parallel to each other, one higher and one lower by a creek. We were on the lower trail. 
A kid on the higher trail kept throwing rocks, which triggered a rock slide. There was a large boulder, about the size of a medium-sized beach ball, roaring down the hill towards us. It was moving so fast that it smelled like gunpowder. My mom and brother turned back and ran, while I ran forward because something told me that if I ran back with them, there wouldn't be enough time for me to not get hit by the boulder. While running out of the way, I got pushed forward by something and fell over, but when I was falling, I saw myself from behind outside of my body. Then I was back in my body. I still think about this often and have no explanation for it. A few years ago, I was walking in the woods, trying to sneak into a music festival nearby. As I'm walking, I notice a presence and look up and see a white figure move in ways I've never seen, above the trees, kind of like a giant transparent octopus angel-like thing. The way it moved suddenly disappeared. I was shaken and thought I must be just tripping, so I continued to walk. Moments later, something I can only explain as the flash like zipped right past me extremely fast and I froze scared shless, then zipped past me again at a speed of like a supercar just zoomed right past me and I think disappeared. I was shaken and frozen, turned, and ran back as fast as I could. I've told my story to a few people, but they never took it seriously, and over the years I just kind of was like whatever, but till this day I've never seen anything like it, and it still bothers me to think about it. Anyone know what it could be? I was around 10-ish at the time, at home, and a friend from school, her younger brother, and their parents were over, visiting. We, the three kids, decided to play hide and seek in the house since we were bored. We played a few rounds, and it came to be my turn to be it. Since we were playing in the house and there weren't many places to hide, we decided to make it harder and turn off all the lights in the hallway and rooms and close all the blinds. It's late afternoon during the time of year when it gets dark early, so it was super dark in the rooms. I go about looking for them, and I decide to try the closet in my room. My closet is like a wall, with two swinging doors to access it. My clothes are hanging in there, and some junk is on the floor of the closet. It would have been hard for someone to hide in there, but maybe not impossible. Anyway, I decided to check the closet. I reach my hand in and feel around. I end up touching what I feel is someone's open palm. Like the back of their hand was against the back of the closet. I touch the hand and immediately feel it flinch and pull away. As it pulls away, I feel their fingers as well. At that point, I feel like I caught the first person and announced, okay, I felt you. Get out. But then no one steps out. I say again in the dark, Simon, I felt you, you lose, come on out. Again, silence. Then I hear my friend and her brother come into the room and ask, what's wrong? Now I'm confused. I turn on the light and look. I'm in the closet, but there's no one there, just my clothes and stuff. I explain what I felt, and all three of us end up feeling really freaked out. We stop playing after that and go to our parents to explain what happened. Our parents go and check, but there's nothing there. They don't make anything more out of it. I'd quote it was that I touched, but I swear to you, I remember it like it was yesterday. I felt a palm and fingers pull away. Skin feels recognizable. And for it to flinch and pull away felt even more obvious. I never had another paranormal event after that, so that's why I figured it was nothing, but that was the first time I felt genuine terror for ghosts or the paranormal. One day I was grounded and folding laundry in my room. I had to be around 8 to 10 years old. I remember vividly folding and placing my outfit for the next day on this foldable bed thing that was basically one giant cushion that folded up into a chair, so I could easily find the clothes the next morning. After I placed the clothing on my chair, my mother called me downstairs to the living room. I was pretty sketched out by the dark, but I would zoom past the darker corners on my way down the stairs, and I'd be able to fight off the terror that way. Well, after I spoke to my mother, she sent me upstairs for bed and to brush my teeth. So I brushed, then happily skipped to bed to read my book and relax in my newly cleaned bedroom. I reached my bedroom and immediately noticed my clothing, which I had laid out on the chair, was gone. I stood there for a few moments in disbelief, suddenly terrified. I searched my room as my mom was rushing me to bed. I am trying to tell her that the clothing is gone. She then realized I hadn't laid anything out for school the next day like I am supposed to do every night, totally disregarding my explanation and absolute horror. As I am attempting to re-explain that my clothes are straight up gone, she's scolding me and talking over me. I look past her shoulders and realize that my wall, the closest one to where my chair sat, and my clothing were. Had a massive slash in the dry wall. Like Freddy Krueger himself, he slashed through it. Or a massive bear. Or cougar. I pointed it out to my mother, and of course, that must have been my fault too, so again, I'm grounded even longer, and no amount of crying would convince her that I truly did not do it myself. I mean, why would I? 
The marks on the wall were way above my head, first of all. And I never did find those pants, shirts, socks, or undies ever again. Despite my mom having made me search for an hour, I was completely convinced that I had hit it all myself for whatever weird ass reason. This is just one of the many strange incidents that happened in my childhood. And one of the biggest reasons is that I will always believe my children when they are scared. Stranger things have happened. I live in a town that's connected to a busier city by two large bridges that lay over Lake Superior. The bridge is essentially the border between the two states. It takes about one minute to get across the bridge because we rarely have any traffic because it's a reasonably small populated area. And it's so large and different from being on the road that you can't really miss driving over it. So about a year ago, my family and I were driving around beneath one of the bridges on the side of the larger city, just talking and having a good time. And the next thing I know, I look out the window, and we're in my hometown, driving around maybe a mile away from the other side of the bridge. This was on a street that is usually on our route home, but I didn't remember being anywhere close to this area last time I looked out the window, which wasn't even a minute before. So, obviously, I bring up the fact that I don't remember going over the bridge, and my father, who seems a bit agitated for some reason, even though we were happily chatting earlier, shoots me down with, we were probably too caught up in our conversation to notice. And I see my mom give him a weird look and whisper, I don't remember going over it either. And after that, we just drove the rest of the way home in silence. I remember this looming feeling over me, like a fear or anxiety. Maybe it was confusion mixed with terror about the fact that I was in one place and then another in a second. I really don't have any idea what happened, and I don't know why my father seems so angry about me bringing it up. I've never asked my siblings if they remembered, and I've also never asked my parents about it since. It could be possible that my mother and I just forgot about driving over, but why would my father say we instead of you? How could all three of us not realize we drove over the bridge? I think it's possible we saw something that wasn't supposed to be seen. I don't want to seem like a crazy conspiracist, so I just try not to think about it. A couple of weeks after my mom died, I was driving home from work, feeling very sad. And a bit angry. I was pissed off at the universe for leaving me alone, I have no other living family left, she was the last. I was thinking about how we both loved birds and would always point them out to each other. I thought, if all that hippie spirituality stuff mom loved is real, then the least she could do is send me a bird, maybe as a kind of sign. It was a long drive, and I saw no birds at all. I thought, of course it isn't real. What a silly thing to think. I didn't see so much as a robin, or a wren, or anything. I parked and walked down the path to my house. While I was putting my key in the door, something colorful caught my eye. I turned. At the end of the path was the most astonishing bird I've ever seen. Every color of the rainbow, a bright yellow or gold head, a scarlet chest, an iridescent blue back, orange or gold wings, black striping, was jaw-dropping. It was the size of a chicken, but a bit taller, with a long tail. It just stood there, staring at me. I started to laugh, and it got spooked and flapped away over the fence. I lived in a large city, which made it even weirder. My neighbor came outside and saw it too, so it wasn't a hallucination. I got into the house and started googling colorful birds of that size and shape, and eventually found it, it was a Chinese golden pheasant. WTF? There were no bird sanctuaries or zoos nearby. I never saw it again. I took it as my mom, rolling her eyes at my cynical rejection of her hippie spirituality stuff, saying, you want to see a bird? I'll send you a bid. It was so great. When I was five, I started to have these weird dreams where I would be sitting in my bed playing with these wooden blocks, I didn't have any in real life. Every time I would finish building a castle, a man would jump on my bed and knock them down. I would wake up to find my bed still bouncing. I would cry, and my mom would come comfort me and say typical parent stuff to calm me down. It's just a dream, she would say often. This happened on a nightly basis. One night, it was different. In the dream, the blocks were painted different colors. That had never happened before, they were always plain wood. I had a bad feeling and became kind of aware that something was wrong. I woke up in the same manner, with the bed bouncing and crying for my mom. She didn't come this time. All of a sudden, something started to pull my bed covers down to the floor. I was frozen in fear. Then it grabbed my foot and started to pull. I yanked myself off my bed to the floor and grabbed onto the bars of the bed with all my strength as it was pulling me under my bed. It felt like hours. All of a sudden, it let go. I ran to my parents' room in complete terror. I scared my parents that night so bad that they called the local priest to come say a blessing. It never happened again. Unexplained knockings in my room. 
I thought I had gotten rid of this, but it returned last week. We have lived in my house for the past five years. I'm generally very sensitive to paranormal things, and I have experienced several paranormal activities in my life. I have had experiences in almost every house we've lived in except two. I love those two houses. This current house has been relatively comfortable. I didn't experience anything for the first two years. I was happy that I didn't. But three years ago, I do not know what changed, but I started feeling uncomfortable or scared sometimes, not very frequently, at night in my room or near the guest bedroom. I brushed it off. A month after this feeling started, I was sleeping in my room. I'm a very light sleeper. The smallest of sounds wakes me up. In the middle of the night, I felt someone sit on my bed near my leg very forcefully. You know the feeling when your mattress sinks a little when someone sits on it? I felt it right next to my leg. I immediately woke up. There was no one there. I was disturbed, but chalked it up to just a nightmare and went back to bed. A week later, again in the middle of the night, I heard weird noises and got awakened by them, only to find no one or anything there that could explain the noises. I was so freaked out that I didn't sleep the rest of the time, prompting my mom to come to my room to ask if I was okay after she saw my lights were still up and I was watching TV, she heard my TV. I was getting a bit worried at this point. I'm not sure of the timeline exactly, but some time later, I started hearing knocking on my bedroom door. I always have it closed. It didn't happen at night, per se. In fact, it happened so often, even in the daytime, that I would always go outside and ask my parents why they were knocking. They always said they didn't, and I was being crazy. This even happened when only my uncle and I were home. So, I bought some sage and went around the house, hoping to clear any negative energy in the house. It stopped, thankfully. It happened once after that, and I cleaned the house again. It went away. It is back now. Last week, I heard the knocking again. I told my dad to come in, and he never did. I went out and asked my dad. He swore it was not him. They are not faint knocks. They are clear knocks, like someone asking for permission to come inside. What do I do? I usually ignore most of the paranormal stuff that happens to me. This time, though, I feel very uneasy. A few months ago, my husband and I decided to downsize and move to a smaller home as two of our children have moved out and into college and USMC boot camp, leaving us with only one child left in the home. The house has been listed, and after many showings, we finally received an acceptable offer yesterday. Then last night happened. I had gone to bed earlier than my husband, as I was very tired. I have two large dogs who are basically my shadow. One of them is my very protective German Shepherd. I laid there in bed for quite a while, feeling like I was just on the edge of sleep but not quite there. And then I heard the first sound. It sounded a little bit like the cord from my phone dangling against the side of my nightstand and making little tapping sounds. My first thought was that it was my cat. But I very distinctly remember when I went to bed that he was sitting outside my bedroom door, and I gave him the opportunity to come into the room, but he didn't, so I shut the door with him outside of the room. I open my eyes and look around, and I see that both dogs are in their dog beds on the opposite end of the room. I close my eyes and proceed to try to fall back asleep. It seems like only minutes later I heard it again. Once again, I look around and see nothing. I close my eyes, and within only a few seconds, I hear it a third time, and I try to ignore it. Except this time, my German Shepherd gets up from his bed and walks up along the side of the bed. He turns around to face away from my bed with his ears forward and alert and proceeds to growl very low and quiet. This now alarms me. I sit up and look around, and of course I see nothing out of the ordinary. After a couple of minutes, he casually walks back to his bed and lies down. I assumed maybe he heard my husband somewhere in the house and wasn't quite sure what he was hearing. So I went to sleep for the rest of the night with no problems. It was the next morning that I was convinced that something beyond my understanding had been going on in my bedroom. When I awoke, it was still dark in the room, and my husband was asleep, so I tiptoed out of the room with the dogs. A short while later, my husband woke up and called me from the bedroom. I come into the room, and he is staring at a canvas photo of him and me that has been on the wall next to his side of the bed for years with no issue. This canvas is not on the wall, but it is on the floor, several feet away from where it was hanging. And not only that, but on my side of the bed, there are three photos on the wall. One photo on the end was tilted and hanging on the wall by its corner. These photos have never fallen off the walls. We do not live in an earthquake zone, as we are in northern Indiana. And lastly, our bedroom is on the basement level. So there's little to no vibration on the walls from any external forces. I proceeded to tell my husband about the sounds I had been hearing the night before, and both of us were fairly spooked. We try to play it off, 
joking that the dead lady in the house is upset that we're leaving. We laughed, but I think inside we were a little uncertain. I'm not one to believe in ghosts, as before this, I can't say I've ever experienced anything paranormal, but I moved recently, and some weird but very minor stuff keeps happening. For context on my new apartment, it is part of a duplex apartment thing that sits on top of a three-car garage in the backyard of my landlord's house. The property is very old, I want to say the main house was built anywhere in the 40s or 50s, the same goes for the apartment. The apartment attached to mine is to the left of mine, whereas my front door is to the right of the apartment, and their front door is to the left of theirs. So ever since I moved in, there have been these very unexplainable noises. I hear someone knock on my front door quite frequently, and I know it isn't coming from my neighbors because it's too loud and clear, and it comes from the right side of my apartment. I also hear footsteps walk through my apartment to the bathroom, which once again is too loud and clear to have been my neighbors. Another time, the cage door on my cat's cage slammed shut and rattled super loud. The cage is elevated on a shelf, and the cats can't get to it, they were also next to me when this happened. The most recent occurrence, and quite honestly, the weirdest, is when, in the middle of the night, I heard my front door slam shut and footsteps walk across my floor. I know for a fact it was my door and not my neighbor's because my door gets caught, so you have to slam it to get it open or closed. Plus, it sounded like I was in the same room as it. My cats also look up to the ceiling a lot these days and randomly get distracted by nothing out in the living room as well. Something happened to me back in 2005. I was living out in the boonies with my mom when I was 15 years old. I had been talking with this girl on and off for weeks, and I was on the phone with her. It was just before dark when this chick was telling me that if I came over to her house, she would sneak outside to hang out with me as soon as her parents went to bed. Luckily, she only lived two miles away, and I had a bike. Horny teenage me didn't take long to decide right then and there that I was going to make that trip. Luckily, my mom always went to bed super early as well. She texted me sometime after 10 p.m. that her parents had gone to bed. It's on. I leave for her house. As I'm riding my bike down these dark country roads, I see almost exactly what you described. Orange glowy lights in a triangular formation. They were just hanging there still. I stopped for a second to get a better look because there were some trees obstructing my view, and they started looking bigger the more I looked at them. I started to feel this really weird sensation that I can only describe as similar to vertigo. I completely blacked out. I wake up, and I'm still on the side of the road, but not where I was before. I got super confused and couldn't quite figure out where I was for a minute. I pull out my phone to look at the time. It's dead. My bike is nowhere to be found. I started heading down the road in what I thought was the direction I was going and suddenly realized where I was. I was in the opposite direction of my house from where I started. I was on the same road, just on the other end of it. I turn around when I realize this and run home. I get home and plug in my phone. It's like 2am, and I have a bunch of missed calls and texts from that chick asking where I'm at. I go to bed and sleep like shit the rest of the night. The next day, I called that girl and told her what happened. She sounds skeptical. I ask her what time she called me the first time last night after I left. She said she called me at around 11 o'clock and it wouldn't go through. I left sometime after 10. I know my phone was at nearly full battery because it was on the charger before I left the house. I do find my bike later that day in the same place I remember stopping. It was just lying there on the side of the road. I remember having really crazy dreams and a bad headache for a couple weeks after this happened. You know, after the first couple weeks, I never really had dreams much anymore. Still don't. I'm not sure if it's related at all. I can't say for sure if it was aliens, abduction, or whatever, but I'll be honest. I'm not normally an anxious guy, but being outside alone at night has creeped me the duck out ever since. Staring into the night sky gives me anxiety when I'm by myself now. Duck everything about that night. I'm not even sure I want to know what happened. Recently, I moved to the Cusco area of Peru. It is full of old Inca ruins, the best known being Machu Picchu. Also, I took up rock climbing, and there is a bouldering area about an hour's hike from the city, known as Los Tecos. It is a hidden place, you can't see it from the roads because it is in a depression atop a hill, and when you are in it, there is absolute silence. Some local climber friends have told me that it used to be an ancient burial ground, looted a long time ago. There are still some ancient mud walls standing. Also, the small caves in the rock formations seem like the kind of place the Incas used to bury people. However, I haven't checked any books on this, the libraries are still closed because of the pandemic. People go there to make rituals. I have found black wax, grain, flour, and leaf offerings, broken ceramics, animal skulls, 
and still burning fires. The family of some friends has warned me about going there, especially at night, because they say there are Mises Negros, black masses. Once, when passing through the area at night, I heard singing and percussion music. Now, to the stories. First, the dogs bark at nothing. I have gone there with several dogs. A pack of stray dogs that always follow me, my girlfriend's puppy, and the dogs of climbers. They are usually calm and resting while people climb, but sometimes, out of nowhere, they prick their ears and look with attention towards nothing. Notice that this is a place of absolute silence. Sometimes, they go crazy and bark at nothing, especially in one cave area. A climber told me that once he felt a small shadow passing behind him and turned around. His dog had turned around too and started growling softly. Second, a lot of us have seen faces. You are climbing or resting, and suddenly, you feel like someone is around. You turn, and it seems, for a moment, that there is a face looking at you from some bushes or rocks. Only for an instant, but at least five people I have talked with have had the exact same experience, including myself. I can't remember a detail about the face, I only felt the outline for a moment. Maybe it is the silence and loneliness that make you alert. I never felt this when with other people. Third, a dream. I dreamed I was in Los Tecos, climbing. Suddenly, I felt a presence behind me. I turned around, and it was the transparent outline of a woman. I could see through her. She came closer and started to try to absorb me and my energy. I pushed her away and woke up. To set the stage, I was about 10 or 11 years old and lived with my younger brother, father, and stepmother in a newish house in rural Ohio. I had never, to this day, ever experienced anything odd or strange in this house or felt weird being there, save for one night. I was lying in bed, and my cat was in the room with me on the floor. I hear what sounds like footsteps just walking back and forth around my bed. I just try to ignore it until they get heavier and faster, almost like someone is speed walking. It isn't consistent, they would walk to one side, stop for a moment or a couple minutes, then just start on the other side of the bed. Then my Xbox in my room turns on by itself. The controller is on my dresser, so I didn't roll on it or something. I get up, turn it off, and get back in bed. I am beginning to feel afraid at this point. The footsteps stop for what seems like a while until I hear my cat start to growl. I sit up and look over to her, and she is on her side, growling and focused on something in the corner of my room by the door. There is nothing there. She continues to do that growl that cats do when they are irritated or ready to fight, as well as flicking her tail, and visibly, the hair on her back is standing up. I am terrified and want to run to my dad's room, but as I said, this is in the corner by the door of my room, and I was afraid that the moment I start to run, I'm going to get snatched by something. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice what looks like a white stream of light flashing across my mirror, almost like a car or something was pulling into my driveway outside, but not as bright or intense. I know this isn't the case because it's late at night, we live in the middle of nowhere, and someone would have to be by our house for that to happen. At this moment, I make a run for it. I reach my dad's room, and he walks me back to my bed and talks to me for about 15 minutes, calming me down. Nothing more happened the rest of that night. I haven't had anything like that happen again. Just an interesting story I thought I'd share that I think about from time to time, and that still freaks me out as an adult. My brother's football team practices behind a church. Being little, I'd go explore to pass the time. Well, there was a fence that divided the church property from the neighboring houses. Me and my other brother would sneak over the fence sometimes. We found a house that no one lived in. There was a pool in the backyard that was overtaken by nature. Literal fish were in there, along with frogs. Anyway, for practice, I went to the backyard of the abandoned house. I jumped the fence and witnessed like 15 nuns in the backyard standing there with their heads down. It looked like they were praying or something. The one nun in front looked right at me and started yelling in a different language. I found it odd how she looked right at me, as if sensing me before seeing me. As she yelled at me, the rest of the nuns kept their heads down, still praying. I jumped back over, scared shless of getting into trouble. When I peeked back over, not seconds later, they were all gone. I'm sure it could be explained away, but it was such an odd sight. It was a little strange and a little creepy. When I was six, I ended up with a severe case of pneumonia and ended up in the hospital for a couple weeks. While I was there, I watched as a little boy from down the hall ran full on into the edge corner of one of those heavy hospital room doors. He was trying to avoid a nebulizer treatment, but he ended up with a severe skull fracture. There was quite a bit of bleeding, a huge amount of screaming, and a bonus bit of trauma for me as a witness. Anyway, that night, my dad came and stood in the doorway of my room. 
My dad passed away when I was two and a half. I knew it was him. He was well over six with dark hair. When I got home from the hospital, he continued to stand in my doorway until I was fully recovered. My dad continued to be a presence in our home while I was growing up. When it was summer, I used to sleep in our basement on a pull-out sofa. No AC at that time. There were many nights I would wake up to the sound of someone doing paperwork in the office. I would hear a chair move, footsteps coming through the family room, where I was sleeping, the storage room door opening, the light going on, and someone sliding boxes around. This was such a common occurrence. I would simply say, I'm trying to sleep, stop it. At that point, all of the previous activities would happen in reverse order, and everything would be quiet again. Once my brother and I reached adulthood, those activities quit. We are of the impression that dad just wanted to stick around and see us grow up. So, years ago, maybe 2008, my friend, 14, and I, 17, were at his grandparents' house, which was a log cabin built at the base of a mountain, slightly uphill from the river that ran in the valley below, maybe 100 yards from the house. You had to cross the river via vehicle or walking bridge to access the house, which really limited the traffic to and from the house. We had been there many times before, and nothing like what I'm about to explain has ever happened. So to set the scene, this house was fairly clean. It couldn't have been more than 20 years old, as the logs were still fresh. His grandparents who lived there cherished their old, antiquated pictures of their family before them, so all around the house were the eerie, old, dilapidated pictures that looked like something from a horror film. It had an enclosed wraparound porch on the front and right sides. Around the back there was a sun room, which was also enclosed, except instead of a bug net, it was glass and was covered by the roof. As you walk in the front door, the stairs to the second floor, which had a little room that overlooked the living room, which was to the right of the stairs, and the kitchen, which was underneath this little room type thing, I don't know the technical term for it, are against a wall that the front door would hit if you opened it too far, and upstairs to the left there was one big bedroom, a bathroom, and this open room with railing around it that overlooked the living room. This is important because the orb took place while we were on the second level in this open room. Around the back of the house, in the sun room mentioned earlier, about five to seven feet away from the door is a very steep mountain bank that was dug out to make room for the house. When I say it's steep, I mean it's barely accessible by dogs, cats, and such. There's no way anything can get up on this bank. Also in the back, since there was no real reason to have them, there were no flood lights or outside lights, no lamp posts, street lights, or anything else that could light up anywhere. As you go up the stairs to the open room, there is immediately at the top of the stairs a bed facing left to right, and directly across the bed facing the wall is a big window, maybe five feet wide. The only way to get to the window is to walk around the bed to the right, where the railing is to overlook the living room. I hope I am describing this well enough because it's well worth it for you to understand where this orb was. Around 2 a.m., my friend and I were upstairs in this open room. He was on the bed, and I was walking around the right side to get to the nightstand under the big window. It being so late, there was no one else awake in the house at all. They had all gone to bed around three or four hours prior. It was silent, and the only sounds coming from anything were the extremely faint sounds of water flowing over rocks from the river. No fans, no TVs, nothing. He was on his phone, and as I reached for my water on the nightstand, I saw this immensely bright orange light shining on the wall, where my shadow was now projected. Immediately I turn around and look out the window and use two fingers to pull the blinds down, and I see this almost impossible to look at orange orb, glowing so brightly it hurts my eyes, that looked like it was 20 to 25 feet down on the ground. At the time, I didn't think of the distance as weird because it was so wild to see this. I had looked at it for maybe half a second, if that, before it diminished almost immediately. Leaving no trace. I dropped the blinds and turned to my friend, who promptly asked me, what the duck was that? In an unacceptable level of volume for 2 a.m. I said, dude, I have no ducking idea. We immediately dropped to the floor and started discussing what the possibilities were. The next day, we walked outside to see what happened, but to our surprise, we found nothing. No charred remains, no broken lights, no rocks, meteors, or anything else, nothing was out of the ordinary. Now, what stumped the hell out of us was when I described to him how far away it looked. So, there was a roof outside that window that you could walk out on. It was the roof over the sun room. It was maybe a 10 foot long roof at a very shallow angle. You could easily walk out on it and lay down to look at the stars. We walked out on the roof to the spot where I saw the orb and found nothing. We even tried to shine a flashlight into the window to replicate the shadow it projected, but it was impossible to get the angle that it was at. This orb looked like it was about the size of a softball, a grapefruit, 
or a small cantaloupe. It was about 5 feet away from the side of the house and appeared to be 20 plus feet down from the window. I've never witnessed another orb, nor can I explain that one. I've told many people, and nobody can explain it either. It was so bright that I saw a black circle everywhere. I looked for a few minutes after seeing it. It was not hot, and it was not flashing or of variable brightness. When it activated and deactivated, it happened at about the same speed as an old desk lamp with an incandescent light bulb would. It was a deep orange, think safety orange. And it was completely silent. It did not move, nor did it smell. But boy, did it scare the duck out of us? What do you all think happened?